The sky in Montreal looked gloomy, all thanks to smoke from more than 150 forest fires still raging elsewhere in Quebec. In Toronto, a haze hung over the downtown core. We know that wildfire smoke causes widespread inflammation. Hundreds of fires are burning in Canada, really hundreds. As of 24 hours ago, there were 414 burning from coast to coast to coast, and more than half of them were considered out of control. There are hundreds of armed forces members now deployed. Additionally, the CAF is helping with everything from delivering food and supplies to people in Mingani, Quebec, to providing logistics support for water bombers at CFB Greenwood. We're talking thousands of people forced to leave their homes, millions of hectares burnt. The smoke has spread an incredible amount, and it's actually now covering huge areas of North America with unhealthy air. This is a map of the smoke forecast for Canada. You can see just how much of the country is covered. Even cities far outside of wildfire zones are being affected, like right here in Toronto, but it's also reached New York City. I want to first of all give a brief public health update on what is an emergency situation, an emergency uh, crisis. And Washington, D.C. A lot of the eastern seaboard is experiencing these conditions, and everyone is talking about it. CNN, The Washington Post, even the BBC. And maybe you noticed a common thread in those headlines, all of them warning about air quality and smoke. Maybe that seems like a no-brainer, but just how bad is it? Well, let's go inside and find out. As many cities across Canada face air quality alerts, we want to spend some time discussing what actually does that mean for your health. So we reached an expert to discuss the health impacts of wildfire smoke. Dr. Christopher Carlston is a physician and the head of respiratory medicine at UBC's Department of Medicine. Hi. Hi, Lauren. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. So when we see the air quality start to deteriorate like this, what are the short term impacts of that? Yeah, I, I, I like the way you put that. They're definitely short term and long term. But speaking of the short term, what really concerns me uh, in that situation is people who have low reserve. Um, that's a phrase I, I, I like to explain briefly. Low reserve meaning that the 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 boundary between um, where they are at normally and where they get into trouble with their disease, say they have asthma, COPD, heart disease, et cetera, is, is narrow, meaning they don't have a lot of room to go before they get into real trouble with uh, flaring their symptoms, exacerbations. Um, those are the people I worry about. It's those with the low reserve and, and also the older uh, they are, because even without a, a significant disease, age itself lowers your reserve. Those are the people I worry about. And so at what point um, do people affected long term, do we start to see those Im impacts? Exactly. So the long term implications of fire smoke is really the, to me, one of the, the very big questions because the fire problem, while it, it's been a problem for, for years, really, it's accelerated so much um, that we haven't really caught up with it in terms of the science of long term, because, of course, that takes years of careful study. Um, so there's a big gap there. So are you seeing that research um, be, research into wildfires become more prominent? Uh, much more prominent. I mean, it's, it's absolutely exploding, and, 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 and really it's good that it is because we desperately need more data, not only on you know, what is it causing? Why is it causing different types of fire smoke? These fires are happening. They're here to stay. They're getting worse. We can't pretend that they're not. Can't wish them away. And so protecting people when they're exposed is absolutely paramount. Um, and that kind of research um, is increasing, but we need much more of it. So let, let's break it down a little bit. Like, what are we actually breathing in when we're breathing in this smoke? With fire smoke, it it's basically whatever's being burned. And forests vary. It's not just the wood. People tend to think of the trees, and it is trees, but it's not just the wood. It's all what we call the organic material and, and, and even organisms. So everything in a fire that goes up, all of the bugs and bacteria and fungi and, and all kinds of pollen, all kinds of different uh, uh, chemicals, et cetera, that mix together in different ways in different regions. Uh, and even worse, if uh, the fire approaches a city or a town or any place with dwellings, with buildings, with man-made structures that have paint, chemicals, household products, you name it, 
uh, metals, et cetera, that's all going to go into the fire mix. So it's a very complicated mixture, um, and, and it does vary, but none of that is, is really good because what we, we do know in general is that when we mix these things together, it tends to have compounding uh, effects, negative effects. Right. And what about those compounding effects for people who are right near the fires, right in the thick of it? Yeah, absolutely. So they're getting the highest exposure, of course, um, and 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 generally, you're talking about people that are living there. So of course, there's going to be these buildings and dwellings that they live in, and all of those things that I mentioned, paint, etc., that comes with it. So those people, for sure, are of, of highest concern across a population of millions, whether it's in BC or, of course, you know, across Canada, where we're seeing the fires now, pretty much across the country. Um, that adds up to a lot of people uh, at, at risk, really, unfortunately. Wow. Okay, Dr. Christopher Carlson, thank you so much. Okay, Lauren, uh, be well, thank you. Okay, so we know how wildfire smoke affects your health, but how do you protect yourself? For that, we've brought in Anand Ram. He's a senior producer of CBC's Health, Science, and Climate Units. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, good, thanks for being here. So, you know, before this even descends, like what can you actually do about it? I mean, experts I spoke to really stress planning, right? And one of the key tools to planning is, is something called the Air Quality Health Index. And that's put out by Environment Canada and in, in uh, coordination with the provinces and Health Canada as well. And what that is is a scale from 1 to 10. And it covers many, many most of the cities in, in, in Canada. And that scale from 1 to 10 plus, actually, 1 to 3, low health risk, right? Anything 3 and above, that's getting into that moderate high territory. And 10 plus, where, for example, today Ottawa is, uh, is very unsafe to your health. And so... Another key factor about that, that index is that it forecasts today, tomorrow, and the next day. And so what the experts I spoke to said uh, is that you can use that to plan ahead. And if you are someone with an underlying health condition such as asthma, um, then you should pay even more attention to that AQHI. Think about even asking your doctor for a renewal of your inhaler in advance of uh, wildfire smoke. And as I just said, uh, you know, leave it, not leaving your home, that's, that's the main advice, right? Keep your doors and windows uh, shut as well and keep some ventilation running. Now, whether that's an HVAC system that's got a good filter on it, um, or if you don't have that, as many people don't, um, or a centralized uh, air, you can use a portable air cleaner, right? That also has a good filter on it. Now, it doesn't have to be expensive. One of the experts I spoke to said that you could even put a filter on top of a box fan and the, the, the key thing there is to look for a filter that has a MERV or multiple efficient reporting value of 13 or higher. And you can put those two together and there's like instructions to do it yourself uh, online. No way, so you can jimmy rig it. Yeah, and you can just make sure that it's in a space with people and then that it's running and it's just sort of air is passing through it and it will help clean the air. No way, okay, so stay inside, but what if you actually have to go outside and go out in it? Then we're talking about masking again. Unfortunately, we're all having, we've all had that conversation a lot of times. But the mask we're talking about, type-wise, we're talking about KN95s and N95s, the, the, the mask that we were using also during the pandemic. Um, but also on, on top of type, it's about fit. If you can feel the air coming around the sides, it's not a good fit, or you maybe need to mold it a little bit more to your, to your face. But those can help us uh, to still participate a little bit more in life uh, if these smoky episodes go on for a long time. So then afterwards, what is, what's your kind of game plan there? There's still work to be done afterwards, right? Because even if you have everything sealed, um, some of that might have seeped in, some of the smoke might have seeped in. None of our houses have a perfect envelope. So even if you're running around and you're closing all the windows uh, when the smoke comes, realizing some of it's seeping in and it actually, you can get a bit accustomed to it and not realize that. So what that means is when the air clears again, make sure you open all the windows, run around your house again, open all the windows, let the smoky air that's built up inside your house out. Um, and, and I think one of the key things afterwards is also to check in on people who might be more acutely affected by this, the vulnerable, right? People with pre-existing conditions, older uh, adults, people who are pregnant. Uh, these are, are, are all people and groups that would be uh, particularly vulnerable, like older adults, for example, have asthma and COPD, are more likely to have those conditions, and that's aggravated by this kind of smoke. So check in on them and, uh, and then make sure that uh, they're, they're doing good. Of course. Anand Ram, thank you so much. No problem.